Welcome to Floss View University, episode 10. I'm Stephanie. I'm Allison. And we run the Cross Stitch channel, uh, Cross Stitch the Globe, uh, where we have three kinds of videos. Today is a tutorial. We do tutorials every Thursday that are designed for beginner stitchers who are mostly, there. we do them for people who buy the patterns from our Etsy shop, but um, putting them on YouTube means everyone can enjoy them. And if you're an experienced, yes, if you're an experienced stitcher and you're stitching around for these videos, um, and you leave tips. We love any extra tips or any other information you want to leave in the comments. We think mm -hmm. it's really helpful. Absolutely. Um, then on Mondays, we alternate between normal floss tube episodes. And if you are new to cross stitch on YouTube and you don't know what a floss tube is, buckle Stay up. Stay tuned. Subscribe and then watch our next one whenever it comes out that just says floss tube number whatever. Yeah. There are deep dives into our personal stitching and there's just a whole underground universe of stitchers posting these personal stitching videos that are so addicting. We've met the best people doing them. Oh my gosh, the best people. And then in between we do deep dives that are more for more advanced stitchers. Like we might do like just like a deep dive into like just one designer or um, like how to make something or... So, um, if you're not subscribed or if you're very new to cross stitch on YouTube, subscribe. We'd love to have you stick around. Yeah. Um, all right. So today's topic is the parts of a pattern. So let's say you are a lot of cross stitchers start with a kit, right? Something that comes with all the things you need. That's how I started mm -hmm. when I was little, I did a needle point yeah. kit and, um, you helped me do my first cross stitch kit up experience. But if you buy a pattern, um, cause let's say you just see the picture and you're like, oh, I'm obsessed with that. I have to stitch that. Um, then you might be, be like, okay, but like what's inside this thing? What's it going to tell me? And like, how do I take this information and like start cross stitching? It can it. be overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. So today we're just going to go over like when you buy a pattern, what are the different things you can expect to see? Now, obviously for copyright reasons, we're not going to show you other people's patterns. So I brought um, two of my patterns in so that I can actually show you like what the things are that you can expect to see. Yeah. But um, let's start with kind of the, the easiest pattern that a designer puts out, which is like a freebie. Now some designers put out like their freebies are like nice and have all the same things that their paid patterns do. But some people will just put out literally like an Instagram post with like, here's a cool free pattern. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the smallest amount of information you could go kit up and start a a project ones that you might have to pick your own floss colors because there's the legend is like one or two colors. yeah it's just like pick a pink and red or, yeah or pick something pick a color it yeah. only has one color yeah um but you'll see the chart you should see like a floss list or thread legend where it lists all the i feel like i'm like really off center <laughs> um where you uh can see like what floss they are recommending now some patterns especially like free the patterns ones, yeah might not even tell you which one to get they might just say like pink Pink or, you know, choose your favorite color if it's not like a yeah. color dependent image. So they'll have the chart and they'll have the red recommendations and then they'll maybe have like the stitch size, but they might not even list maybe that separately because the chart will tell, like you can just see on the chart, like, oh, this is 10 50, by, yeah, 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 whatever. So like with that information, you could theoretically go kit up something if you knew uh, how many colors of threads roughly what color to buy or you're on your own and here are where the symbols are on the shirt mm -hmm. <laughs> and you could go you could do it but usually when you buy a pattern it comes with more information than mm -hmm. that so um allison when you buy a pattern what are the first things you look for um i want to look at the stitch size because i need to figure out how wide and how long my fabric needs to be so when you buy a pattern, um, sometimes they will literally say like stitch count 143 by 143 and they'll just give you a size guide. Sometimes they won't. Um, sometimes they'll say they won't actually give the size listed. It's typical that they give that number. If they don't, you can see it on the chart. Right. Like, um, usually not always, but a lot of times the charts will be, um, gridded where they have like zero to 10, 20, 30. So if you have the whole chart, yeah. if you have the whole chart, you can see like, oh, this, this piece is, this is, has multiple pages on it, but you can see like, oh, this is 70 by 54. Right. Because you could see like, oh, it has, it goes all the way to 70. Some patterns will list, um, stitch count, um, which on a full coverage would just be like every single one height times width. 
Um, so on my patterns, I like to list, um, Oh, I thought I listed that. I don't actually. I thought I did list that it was, but you can see like here on mine, like the stitch guide uh, or the stitch, the stitch size. All right. What else do you like to look for first? For then I want to see how many different flosses I need to buy. Yes. So um, on a pattern like this, right, that is one color. They might tell you which color they did it in. So this said, this thread legend is really short. So this floss list is really short. It says black silk or DMC number 310. So black silk or black cotton DMC. Um, obviously you could do this in any color. I chose pink. <laughs> so it, the thread list is a guide, but it is not like you have to do that. Right. On a full coverage where you're trying to get a specific picture. It matters a lot more. It, it's not that you can't make subtle changes between like different shades. It's that you have to really know how they're going to work together. And so you, you want to start out with your floss list as like kind of your Bible and then change things up as you go. Like maybe you're trying to kit this or stash and you might see, oh, I have a green that is in between these greens, you know, you, 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 but you have to be better with color than I am to be able to do that. <laughs> I have never done my own conversion on a full. Color. I can tell when things look really off when I'm stitching the models and yeah. I'll switch it, but usually I'm switching it to another color in the pattern, not like going to the, like DMC and be like, I don't like this brown, you know, like, yeah. um, so like for this, this is listing all the colors. Now, this one just said, here's what you get black, right? Or you can really use any color on a full coverage because the amounts that you use can vary. Um, on Mac, on um, Mac Stitch, which is the program I design in, they have the option of letting you um, say how many stitches a color mm -hmm. has yeah. and how many skeins you need. So, like, if a color has 58 stitches, you might say, like, okay, well, that gold is really pretty, but I have this other yellow I'm going to use instead because it's only 58 stitches. Whereas, like, um, this blue is in 300 stitches. So, you can see, like... This is a much more detailed one, and that's just because modern computer programs can spit out a lot more information, and a lot of the older patterns just yeah. weren't computerized to begin with right. in the same way. Um, that's, it's, that's really, it's good to know when you're kidding up, if you're using fancy floss, especially because of the <laughs> color dye, the lot, dye lots. Um, how many you need. Yeah, how many stains you need. So that that's extra information. Like she said, not every pattern has that, but it's, that's a good pattern yeah. to me that, um, that includes that. I would. I guess I bonus. assume if it doesn't say two skeins, even on a, so like this one, if it, some of my patterns do say get two skeins, right? Cause this, many, this will add up to more. Mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't say two skeins, I still run into problems where like I'm stitching it on like a smaller count fabric. So my design is bigger um, where I wish I had bought two skeins. Mm. And then have to go figure it out. <laughs> but um, buy four different colors. So you might want to like look at your pattern, <laughs> like your floss list, and be like, okay, well, this just lists them. But let me look at the pattern. Is that blue used everywhere? Do I maybe just want to be safe and buy one extra one if it's not a DMC color that you can just easily Replace. get? Yeah. Um, all right. So we have our. So this I've seen this called a floss list, and I've seen this called a thread legend. On the thread legend, it's not only going to list what the thread is so if this has the dmc numbers and the name on the dmc if it was like classic color works or something it would say like classic color works and on the name or whatever um and then it also has the symbol so that you can match up your pattern and on the patterns some patterns have charts that are in color some have black and white charts and some have both so my patterns have both because it is very easy for me to just select both but i don't chart the way that like you know, some companies have been charting things a certain way for a long time and I'm using like a very modern program. So I don't know what the difference is. Um, but like, uh, like these symbols, so like this symbol, this DMC 755 lines up with that stitch. So that's literally what I would stitch first on it. Um, and Fred Legends can also have more information than that even or they can have less they like some people if they chart it in like classic like a, like a different brand that's not dmc might include their own conversion to dmc so 
Um, oh, and I forgot to mention on the size guide. The size guide will usually tell you what the size is for the fabric model. Mm -hmm. But if the size you choose is different, I list a few different sizes. But if the size you choose is different than the listed one, then you're, it's up to you to do the math to figure out. Yeah. And there are several apps that you can use that, that are really good. I think yeah. X Calculator is one. And yeah, I just do... You go to fatquartershop.com. No, I just go to my calculator. Oh, your calculator. Yeah. That also works. <laughs> but because I like think about it a lot, because yeah. I don't stitch. I stitch with everything from 14 count to 40 count. Mm -hmm. So like it does change a lot. So I'm very used to being like, okay, we'll divide it by whatever. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, you want to be all smart about it. Well, now I'm I use an app. <laughs> now I'm starting to think like, okay, I really got to um, make sure that it fits in a standard frame because I won't pay for framing right now. Right. Um, all right. Other information you might find. So those are like the most important things are like the thread legend slash floss list, the um, actual chart itself, and then also, um, oh, the stitch guide, oh, the size guide, yes, but then also the stitch guide. So if there's any stitches that aren't traditional cross stitches, It'll tell you what those are and like how those are marked. So like a back stitch might sometimes be. Sometimes they're in different colors. And yeah. yeah. Sometimes they're in different colors than the back stitch is done in the pattern. Yeah. I, hate it's that. Kind of I know that I know that why that happens, but I hate it. Yeah. Um, or like French knots. Um, yeah. Or uh, and sometimes that stitch guy will tell you how to do those specialty stitches. Um, and sometimes they won't. Yeah. And there'll be bead, the beading section that yeah. they'll have their own symbol. Yeah. So like if you look at a mirabilia chart, it has like all of the cotton flosses and then it has all of the silk flosses and then it has all of the beads listed differently. And then it has, if it has treasure, petite, if it has treasures, they might be like, those will be listed separately. So, and then blends might be listed separately. So a blend is where you take two threads and you mix them together. Also called tweeting. Also called tweeting. Um, so that the thread legend and the stitch guide together give you like the overall picture of what is in the chart. And if you don't have a stitch guide, it's probably because you just have traditional cross stitches. Right. And like some common stitches you'll see in cross stitch that aren't that is like a French knot, Smyrna cross, Algerian eyelets, satin stitches, queen stitches. There's a, Jessica stitches. There's a lot, but, um, if you don't know how to do those stitches and you don't feel like your chart prepares you for actually doing them, just look on YouTube because there's somebody who's made a good demo of all of them. Um, and actually I was watching Annie the proper stitcher today and she explained how to do a smear and a cross. She wasn't even like demoing it. She just literally showed the like and explained like the order. And I was like, Oh, okay. And it clicked for the first time. Yeah. Um, depending on the kind of learner you are, that might be better than just looking at the stitch guide. Um, okay, a couple other things that I included in my patterns that um, I think are nice to have. Is, um, so obviously like either a model stitch or a mock-up. So this pattern has a mock-up. A lot of mine have model stitches. A lot of like, um, so this is a model stitch. So this picture is like literally- It's a picture so, of an actual Somebody project. literally stitched it. And before the digital age, when people did them, um, I'll show you guys when people did them. I don't know if I have. Okay, so this is not it. But before, when people um, like literally like stitched it up and then took a photo of it, like this this would photograph. be a literal. F I, yeah, I think now this is just a handout. But these used to be like literal, just like an actual photograph, like taped to it. Yeah. Um. Ooh. I guess I could put that up later. Okay. Um. So. You want to see the model or the mock-up. The bigger full coverages don't tend to have models because it would literally take a company longer to stitch it than it would be worth to produce it. <laughs> um, I include a little information about the patterns. I know some companies do, some companies don't. Some companies have that information available on their website. Um, and I list like how to contact us and resources and stuff. Um, but that's more because I, I, I started doing it from the perspective of somebody who was already in the like world of stitchers with floss tube and wanted like more people to know how to connect to us. Yeah. Um, and because mine are based on photographs, I have the original photograph and the model stitch. So you can kind of see the difference. Um, I think there's one other thing I wanted to point Oh, model information. So your size guide and your, like all those things will tell you what they intended to do. But, um, if it doesn't list it, if that's not listed, if because some people are like, well, you can do it on whatever you want, but they'll still tell you, but our model is done like this. So like my, this, the model for this pattern was done on 14 count, AL, but like, so if you do it on 16 count or 18 count, it will look different than the model. 
Um, and also if the model was stitched by anyone in particular, they will give that person credit because that's important. Because that's a lot of work. It's a lot of stitching, yeah. Uh, yes. Um, and then is there anything else on the pattern that you think is important to note? No, um, I like it sometimes, like specifically talking about the chart, like, I like when there's a center line and you can mm -hmm. actually like, I like the detailed charts where it's written out with the numbers and you can see the center lines and the cross lines and yeah. things like that. So that's another thing I would look at is like how detailed, how much information is this chart giving me? The more the barrier. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, and if you're like shopping in a store and you can open up the mm -hmm. chart and like see it before you purchase it, you might know like, oh, this one doesn't have a center line or though this one doesn't count like yeah and that may be like because there are definitely some charts that are more pleasant to stitch on than others or if the symbols are so close to each other that it's hard to distinguish what thread you're really supposed to be using i've come across that i have some before. old older patterns that are um you have older patterns that are tight like a typewriter yes. and i have older patterns that are handwritten and it can be hard to read the symbols um it honestly can and also like if you're someone who only wants to use like a pattern keeper or markup XP and want to do things digitally, yeah. some patterns scan better than others. Mm -hmm. And like looking at the pattern and being like, oh, this is handwritten. This probably isn't going to scan well. I probably, I still want to stitch this, but like that's going to change your experience a lot. So like looking at the pattern, like how it's physically constructed, is it very readable? will also affect you in ways you might not right. think about. And some of those things you won't get to look at, like if it's a PDF or whatever, you won't get to sneak peek that, but just keep it in the back of your mind, like this designer does it this way, and it, you'll most likely know whether or not you're gonna like that specific. There's a design that I'm stitching type. that I really like the design, um, but I cannot get it to load in a pattern keeper, and I don't know why, because it's a digitally created, oh. Thing, so I would think it would go into pattern or into markup yeah. very easily, but it will not. And so I'm just, and I don't want to like put this person on blast because yeah. it's like, you know, like, so, so I don't want to complain about that when I'm talking about the piece because I love the piece, but it does make the stitching experience different, yeah. especially if you're someone like me who likes stats. And um, one other thing you might see, especially on um, uh, like, is the pattern number. And not every designer does this, and I actually need to go back and add them, but that is the order that they came out in for that designer. So MD1 is Mirabilia Designs number one. MD200 is the one that's coming out in like a couple months. So like, it'll help you kind of know where in the chronology. So if there's a designer whose work has changed a lot and you really like one era of their work, you can maybe see like, okay, well like what I like, I unfortunately, I really like the early Mirabilia is more than the later ones. I think that it has something to do with like, the body, I feel like they're much skinnier now. Oh, okay. Um, and so, like, I do tend to like the older, the bigger gowns, the, like, less... It's just a different era of art. Yeah. And so, I do... I'm like, I like one, and they'll be like, oh, that's MD10, that makes sense. And it's $100, that makes sense. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that's kind of what you can expect, like, and what we look for in a pattern, and what we think is important, and what, how we use that information. Um, the next one is going to be literally how to read a chart, which will duplicate some of this information. So um, that one will probably be pretty brief, but we do want to have it just be a standalone in case somebody only needs to know that. Sure. And um, uh, if you're not subscribed, subscribe, and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye.